So essentially, so I've been using this thing for um, the last year or more, uh, and the it, it's been amazing for me. Actually, I started out just kind of thinking it was like another way to do a Google search, but it's very, very different. The difference between just generally searching and using ChatGPT is like, it's like you're talking to somebody. Um, and so, in fact, they call it um, a conversational model. Um, because it literally will speak, you know, its responses will speak in uh, the tone or um, it'll, it'll sound the way that, that you want it to sound. If you feed it what's called a persona, which I'll talk about, you can give it a kind of point of reference to, uh, to give you its, its responses. All right. And so um, essentially, so I, here's, here's the bottom line. I got tired of having to kind of think up, you know, new projects, um, write out lesson plans and lectures and all of that stuff. And I and when I heard that this is something that could help, I jumped right on it. And it's been amazing for me. And I can show you some of the examples. I will show you examples that I've already created. But um, we'll just tell you a little bit about what it is. And then we're going to jump right into it. Actually, let me share my screen. Um, and basically, there are two versions of ChatGPT. There's 3.5, and then there's GPT-4. 4.0 is the paid version. 3.5 um, is free. You can have access to it right now. You just set up an account. I just sign in with my Google account. Um, and with the difference really is that GPT-4 pulls its information from a larger data model. And so it also takes time. It like slows the process down for whatever reason. Um, I'm not that much of an expert on the back end of it, but it does, I will, I'm, I'll say this again, I am not an expert at all on the back end of it, but I could tell you what it does. So it takes its time and it gives you a more thought out response. Chat GPT, I'm sorry, GPT 3.5 is faster it's free. It still gives you a good response, but comparing the two, GPT-4 gives you a much more thorough and detailed response. So, but I'm going to be showing you, I'll show you both, but 3.5 is where I'll focus my attention in case you don't want to pay for the subscription. You just want to use the free version. So the, the key here, the key with, um, using chat GPT or any AI, you know, artificial intelligence software is the prompt. So if you're not familiar with what a prompt is, it's basically how you question what, you, you know, how you form the question, how you query the, the database. So if you're looking in Google and you're looking for, um, let's say for me, I would want to find the, the top graphic designers um, since 1920, like I'd love to find out all of those, the best designers or the most popular designers, maybe not the best, but you know, the most popular, those have made a name for themselves. Um, I could look up Google. It'll find me links. I'll go have to do the search myself and all of that. Well, chat GPT will deliver that information to me and then give me more information about it. I can tell it to give me, um, details about each person's history or life story or how they got into, you know, yeah. what their design philosophies are or whatever, it will go out, locate that information and pull it all, give it to me and tell it to me like it's talking to me. And so anyway, that's really what chat GPT is, um, is about and, and how to get your information is through these prompts. Now, uh, the, the, the important part of this is really understanding how to format your prompts. So now a, a well-crafted prompt, this is really what I was getting to, is that prompts have to be designed well. I mean, we could just say, create a lesson plan. And that would, and you could, you know, say, create a lesson plan for, I don't know, biology class. And it would give you a good lesson plan. But if you said, as a skilled educator, that's, a, that's giving it the persona, I want you to create a lesson plan for a ninth grade biology class covering the topic of photosynthesis. The two would give you very much, very different responses. So the, the prompt writing is very, very important. And so, and I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll give you some examples of that in just a moment. Um, but when you construct your prompt, these are some of the things, like the principles you want to remember about how to construct a good prompt. 
Now, I'll be completely honest. I don't use all of them all the time. They're not all relevant for every single question that I'm looking for, but you just it's something to, to kind of start with. So first, you have to understand, you have to give it the context, clearly state the topic that you, uh, you know, want to find information about. Um, what's the desired outcome? Outcome You want, uh, you know, what's the goal or the purpose of the response? So you might, uh, in the, the case of the lesson plan, you might say, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a step-by-step -step instruction guide. That would be the desired outcome. And it would give you it, that exact thing. Constraints. Now, you might want to tell it some limitation. You say, you know, leave out any information about such and such or whatever. So, uh, or include, make sure you include this, 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 and this. Examples. If I'm looking for information about something, I might give like, oh, how, what's a good example of this? I wanted some information about classroom management, and then I, I gave it some different examples about, you know, what I found online about different classroom management uh, techniques, and I plugged that into it and then asked it to give me some of its best suggestions, and it took all that information and then kind of compiled it into a suggestion, so that's that's the examples aspect of it. Uh, and then follow up questions, you can include additional anything additional to, you know, or elaborate, as I say here to um, give it more, more to go on more details for it to go on. Um, personas, basically, they help to shape the AI's behavior. Now, I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going to give you these examples. After this screen, we will jump right into some examples, but I do need to tell you what, again, the personas are. And this actually does have a good example in it. Um, it basically is a way to have it respond to you in the tone of a particular person, occupation, or you know, whatever. So for instance, an example might include, you can have it act as a registered nurse with 15 years of experience in the ICU. And what that means is that when you, when you ask it questions, it will speak with the jargon, it will speak with the tone of a nurse and the information that a nurse might have. Um, act as a child care provider with a focus on infant development as opposed to, let's say, teenage development, right? Or something like that. Um, act as a compassionate teacher. And this one, I have another example I'll share, share with you, but this would be a good one for, you're looking for letter examples of what to write parents, you know, uh, about their, their child. Like the example that I've got, the child, uh, Sally comes in late. She doesn't, you know, do her work. You don't want to just say that in an email. You want to be compassionate about it. So you start with this little intro Give a little information about Sally and the things that you're having problems with, and then it will give you a compassionate letter to send home. Now, you don't have to use it verbatim, you know, but it's a great starting point. I, I use all of this as a starting point. I've never, well, generally speaking, 90% of the stuff that I that comes out of it, I, I modify. And then, or act as a South Seas pirate. And so here's, here's a good, in fact, let me give you that example. <laughs> this is a fun one. So let's go to, uh, here we go. No, here we go. Yeah, so I asked it to act as a South Seas pirate, write a speech to your crew about the benefits of color theory and the horrors of poor kerning. You know, army hearty, lend your ears to this old sea dog. I've sailed the seven seas, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you go on down here. Think about our flag, the Jolly Roger, black and white it be, black the color of power. And it goes in to talk about color, color theory, and all of the things that I asked it to talk about in the tone of a, a salty sea pirate, South Seas pirate. But what if I, the next, very next thing, I wanted to shorten that whole thing to one paragraph. I punch in that query, uh, I submit that, and this is what it comes up with, right? A cramped message looks like a madman's ramble, not, uh, not a dire warning, blah, 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 blah. That would have to do with kerning. So, that's a great example of what a persona does um, and all of that. Um, let's see here. These are just some of the things actually that I'm going to be talking about and some of the different I, uh, things that I could think of actually that, that chat GPT helped me come up with, to be honest with you, um, that you know, different ways that teachers can use or anybody, you know, 
can use this, specifically teachers. So there you go. Um, so let me dive into that. Um, so lesson plan writing. So this is a great one. As a skilled science and biology teach, uh, educator, create a lesson plan for a ninth grade biology class uh, covering the topic of photosynthesis. I'm going to pop that right into chat GPT and let us see exactly what it does. Um, in fact, yeah, there we go. Now I'm in chat GPT 3.5, which is the free model. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Notice how quick it works. It's very, very fast. Um, I'll even jump over to 4.0 and show you the difference between the two, uh, with the same prompt. But if we go up to the top now, there you go. Now the prompt was as a skilled science and biology educator, we're looking for a right lesson plan on the topic of photosynthesis. And there it is, objective, materials needed, lesson plan for day one, even the amount of uh, minutes that you should spend on each subject or each um, unit or whatever, and so on, right? And then an assessment, homework, notes, right? That is chat GPT 3.5. So let me jump over, we'll do a, a brand new one to 4.0, which is the paid version. It's $20 a month. Um, in this paid version, you can use just the simple default or, and I'll go over this later, I'm not going to spend time right now, but there are plugins that you can have it add to the conversation and get different kinds of information. So I'm going to sit with, I'm going to stick with the um, default. You'll notice the first thing here that it goes much slower, not much slower, but it goes slower. Watch this. It's not as fast. It's taking its time. The response is a little bit different uh, in formatting. I don't know. I can't tell you now if it's different in content. Right. So let me jump back up here and just take a look at the beginning of this subject, the grade for it, topic excuse me, the duration for this particular lesson, um, lesson objectives, materials, and so on. Day, the, day one, the intro should take 10 minutes, right? Now, here's the thing that I like to do with my lesson plans. The intro, it says here, begin with a short discussion on how plants are different from animals, emphasizing their ability. Now, I'm not a biology teacher, but if I were, I'm sure, you know, you know, your I would know my stuff as a graphic designer, as a graphic design teacher, I know my stuff. If this was being, let's say this was a conversation about kerning or typography, I could probably talk about it off the top of my head. But what I like to do, even if I know the topic is I will, then the very next thing is ask it to um, uh, give details, or let's see, let's see, um, help write a short, let's say 10 minute lecture. That's way too long, but um, on day one, uh, introduction. Sorry, intro, I could, I could spell, sorry, I don't know what's going wrong with me. Anyway, let's go all the way down to the bottom. And then you can see here, it gives you homework, differentiation, and a reflection. Let's hit that. Now it should, let's see what it comes up with. Comes up with a little lecture. Now I didn't ask it for any sort of other information. I simply asked for a lecture based on the intro. You could give it a lot more details and tell it to focus its attention in one area or avoid certain other areas. Um, And there, there you go. Now I could let it go on and on. I'm going to stop the generation of it because it's it'll go on and on and on. All right, but that's just one way, uh, one way to use it with for lesson plans. Um, let, let me jump over here. Any questions before I move on to project handouts? I'm going to some of these I will I'll glance over. There are others I want to spend more time on. But if you guys have any questions, please just uh, either speak up or raise your hand or whatever. Okay, just stop me in the middle of it. Project handouts. I mean, it is what it is there. It, it, if you need a handout um, and you want specific information, this is a great way to, to do it. You want to uh, design a handout for a group project on the process of precipitation. 
Okay, you pump punch that in there. Let's just throw it in. See what ChatGPT gives us. We'll create a new chat, and I'll be using three point five for this one. Bam! Super quick. There it is. Now, I would never just take this and print it out. You would put this into a Google Doc or a, you know, a, 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 a Word, what is it, Microsoft Word or whatever, any kind of a document, format it, make sure the information is correct, and um, and then do what you want with it. But there it is. That's a good handout talking about, pre about precipitation, right? There you go. So let me jump back uh, to the next one. Writing tests and quizzes. This is actually... Um, this is a, I'll be honest with you. I'll just say hit and miss. Sometimes it, uh, uh, I'll say about 85% of the time that I've used this for quizzes, it's been good. Um, but this is an example of how I would format a prompt to create a quiz. Let's say I'm a BIDA teacher. BIDA is the building industry technology, uh, the construction folks. So your expertise teach, sorry, your expertise is in teaching practical and theor theoretical aspects of the construction industry, right? I'm looking for 35 question test. Um, the test should uh, have multiple choice, short answer and essay questions, and then giving it the topics, not only the topics, but a little information about each topic. Okay, you could stop and say, okay, safety and construction, tools and materials, and then just let it determine what it thinks, you know, should be a part of that. But here I've given it more information. That's what I want it to focus on. All right, so let's grab this whole thing and create a brand new prompt in 3.5. And we'll do this both in 3.5 and, uh, uh, and 4. Now, before I do that, before I do it, wait, let's see. Yeah, include the correct answers for all questions. So that's important. You got to make sure you have that in there. And then let's hit it. Okay, while it's typing, let's go to the top here. All right, it's even broken it out into each area. Um, Occupational Safety and Hazard Association, blah, blah, blah. And there's the answer. Uh, essay question. There's no answer for that. Oh, wait, answer. Yeah, this is what they're what you're generally looking for with this question all right and so on okay so now let's let's see what that looks like using chat gpt4 remember I, I haven't even gotten to the plugins yet so we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit the same exact prompt okay formatting it a little bit better a little differently Uh, what's the minimum width of a trench where the workers need to have a protective system in place? I don't know if that's correct. It looks right to, to me, though. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but that's, you know, and then it's broken it out once again into categories. So there you go. That's the difference. Let me stop the generation on that guy. And then just, you know, comparing the two, you can jump back over here. And notice it gives it a, a name. You can actually come back in here and you could rename any of these. And it saves a history of all of your searches, all of your queries and everything. So that's GPT 3.5, that is 4.0. Okay, all right. Let's see here, oops, wrong one. Let me, let me actually close that up. Uh, creating rubrics. John, yes. Yeah, have you, uh, have you tried like, some of those like chat GPT apps where they got it, where you can upload like a PDF file, like some type of like, say you're like textbooks, for instance, right? And you would have those in the form of a PDF to help with your prompts because, you know, like how you're saying as a, as a, this teacher or somebody who knows the cold war, you know, you could still, you could upload on like a, a an app that utilizes chat GPT with, with that information, right? You would have the whole cold war context and, for it to generate the uh, the output based on that. Uh, I don't know if you've tried any of those uh, yeah. tools oh, out there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, yeah, in fact, that leads me right into working with the, the plugins. That's exactly how you would do that. So, uh, in fact, let me, you know what? Um, I don't know if this is going to be a good or a bad thing, but I'm going to look up just for the sake of 
let's look up a PDF on the Cold War. Um, the, let's, let's see here. Uh, PDF, let's see if we can download a PDF. There we go, got a Cold War PDF. Uh, let me quickly open that. Excellent. All right, let's see if this can, if it will do uh, what it is. Let me show you guys the, the PDF real quick so you know what we're what I'm looking at. And thank you for that, John. I, I appreciate that. This is actually a really good example of using those um, prompts. I'm sorry, the um, the plugins. So there is the okay, the PDF. It is uh, OCR recognizable, which is good. You, you know, obviously, if it had just an image of the text, it would make it tough. Uh, but it needs to be able to recognize what's on the page. So with that, there. Let's go back over to ChatGPT. And uh, this is where you have to have a, a subscription in order to, to get access to these plugins. So I'm going to go ahead and click over to the plugins. I actually went, what you do is go down, you'll get none of these listed at the very beginning. You'll, you'll have nothing. You go to the plugin store and then you can search for anything that has to do with what you're looking for. And you can see here, access these. I've installed a couple of them and found the ones that work and, and don't work. Um, and once you install them, you go back in and then you activate them and you can have up to three enabled at any given time. So what I found WebPilot here, it says it browses web pages and PDF data. I'm going to leave that one checked. Uh, Wolfram is a math kind of like in, it's what it says, real time data kind of thing. We're going to leave that one alone. Let's see, we need... Um, Paraphraser, which is, will take information and put it into a much easier way to, to understand it. Uh, and then the last one, we want it to look at the PDF, um, Ask Your PDF. So I'll check that one right there. So with Ask Your PDF, it will uh, look into the document, find answers, and bring the information to my fingertips. I've also got a couple of others. We'll see if this one works. Sometimes they crash on me. So here we go. There, let me pop this into a new chat, GPT-4. It's got my three set up. All right, now let's see what it does. I need it to, first of all, oh yeah, that's right. So we're going to tell it to read through the uh, PDF. And, oh yeah, so you have to upload this PDF to your... Um, in order to get access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and upload the PDF. You have to give it a link. Not You can't upload the actual file. So where'd it go? There it is right there. Let's um, copy the link. Let me make sure that that is shareable. Hold on a minute. Anyone with the link? Okay, good. Copy that link. Chat GPT. Pop it in there. Uh, type done when you have finished and wait for my next instruction. This is in, uh, important because it will actually start to type out and like talk to you about the, pro, <laughs> the, the PDF. So let's see what it, what it does here. All right, it's using ask your PDF. And you can see what it's doing if I click in here and you can watch what it does, but it's just looking through a bunch of code and then you see now you, you are told to type done. There we go. T done. All right. All right. There we go. Um, so now from this point of view, we can say as a knowledgeable blah, 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 blah. Let's see what it gives us. Here's a lecture outline introduction. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Let's let me change this. There's another another thing you can do with ChatGPT. Go back and let's just change that. I don't want that that query of that response. Let's say um, give me uh, the three top points you've found in this PDF.
see now it said based on the summary provided i think it's looking at this one here so what i'm going to do is let's change this one and instead of this i'd like it to just say uh you know just give me the three uh three top uh points in this pdf and then let's see what happens there it is now the plugins are really really good for this purpose looking at actual data but it's also the only way that you can get chat gpt to look at live current internet you know data off the internet chat gpt 3.5 only has data or the data models are only relevant up to 2021 that's all the information that it has. That's the cutoff. And it will tell you that. It will say, well, I only have this information. I can't help you pass that. But I can. I, it'll give you suggestions. But um, there you go. Wait a minute. Yeah, there's probably something up with this plugin. That's probably what yeah, it is. Yeah, this, yeah, the plugin's wrong. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. So that, that's another thing. This is still, you know, it's brand new. So now I would go back. I would change the plugin, use a different one, not not the uh, the one that I've got there. But j just to show you how it can actually, it does access that information because it gave us that, that summary um, above here. We can go back here, right? So, um, all right, let's let's jump back into this document. So, um, so let's go through it down. We don't have to do all of these, but you can see, you know, um, basically what it can do. But this is a this is one that I am really happy about. <laughs> this is super uh, helpful for me. This uh, parent teacher communication, and I'll give you, a, uh, I'll show you exactly what happens. This is what I was talking about before. So as a compassionate teacher, write an, uh, an email uh, to a parent discussing their child's progress and the areas for improvement. Child's name is Sally Anderson. Uh, she understands the material, but has not turned in the last two assignments. Um, and she's late twice a week. Okay, so let's take all of that and using 3.5, welcome, Sean. Using 3.5, Let's see what that looks like. Pop that in there. We've got the persona. We've got the information that we want. We've got, um, or the information, of the, the details. And we've got, let's see. Keep it, write an email that tells it what we want it to do. Keep it no more than, than one page or three paragraphs long. Now, we didn't give it a tone. We didn't say have a, you know, com well, we did say compassion. That's the tone, but we didn't tell it anything more than that. So it may come at you with, with something that's a little too like corporate or professional, you know, or not very heartfelt. Um, so you just read through it, you know, take what you want. Um, you know, I'm pleased to share that Sally demonstrates a good understanding of the material covered in our class, right? So what if I said, Let's add to this. Let's go down here. Uh, as a compassionate teacher, do, 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 an email. Um, write this email in the in a um, well compassionate uh, with a heartfelt tone. And let's just see what that gives, what what that comes up with. Yeah, I hope this email finds you well. I'm writing to discuss academic progress, overall experience. First and foremost, I want to express my genuine appreciation for the effort, enthusiasm, right? And it goes into and adds a little bit more kind of heartfeltedness, <laughs> right? Now, as I said earlier, I would never take this and just send it to the parent. You want to modify it and make it, you know, your own voice um, and tone. But here's, this is a, another aspect to this i don't know if you guys have noticed this little button said regen saying regenerate down at the bottom here it's always been there i don't think i've used it yet in this uh discussion but let me just show you here if we just click regenerate what that does is it gives you another option it'll just come at it from another point of view or not another point of view it might just change it up a little bit here um Let's see, share some areas where I believe she can uh, further excel. As her teacher, it's my utmost property, uh, property priority to ensure that Sally reaches her full potential. Let's do it one more time. And you can do it as much as you want. What I've found is after like five or six times, it starts to kind of reiterate what it's already given you. 
Um, I truly care about her growth and development, both academically and personally, right? So it changes it just a little bit. So you can use that. And then you can go back through and pick and choose. Let's say you like this paragraph from here and you like this paragraph from there. You can, you know, mix and match. Um, regenerate is super helpful. Uh, and the ability to go back and start the, converse, the conversation over with a different or change change your question, you know. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let me go back. Um, adapting teacher uh, teaching techniques, collaborating amongst other teachers, getting you know, uh, getting ideas for how you can collaborate so what if as a um let's see do, 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 a political science teacher you want to work with the uh languages from another you know of languages of other than english thank you other than english so let's let's see what that comes up with a comparative political sciences and foreign language case studies and it gives you a little information about how to use that diplomatic language and international relations simulations uh, global political debates with language specific topics. All right. Now that is the, the free version. That's 3.5. Let's see what the paid 4.0 version comes up with. Now, just using the default, not with the plugins. Same exact prompt. Bridging gaps through languages and political understanding. All right, it's slower. It's taking its time. I don't know if it, that means it's thinking. I I'm assuming that's what it's what it means. <laughs> All right, there you go. I'm going to stop the generation, but that gives you a good idea. Policy translations, how different cultures understand the same laws. That's an interesting point of view. Um, you know, you can go back in and let's do a different one that adds in the. Um, I'm, let's take ask your PDF off and look for. Uh, get current factual data on companies. No high perplex perplexity integrates. So let's see what happens when we enable some of these plugins. It'll probably give you pretty much the same response that we just got from the default 4.0. It's pretty close, pretty close. And it's, I don't know why it's just shorter, but it's a different, it's a different one. What I found <laughs> is that it, it well, it's a different experience every time I use it pretty much. Let's regenerate that. Let's see what, what else it comes up with. It's just reformatting the response in a different way. So I'm going to stop that gen, that one right there. But that gives you a really good idea about that, how that works and regenerating your response. Um, you could then copy everything that sends it to the clipboard and you're, you know, you can use it. Um, what I'd like to do, let me go back through some of the, the other things that I've done. Oh, oh, actually, there are a couple of other things that I did want to, to touch on. There is a character limit. This is important um, because as you go through this and you're typing back and forth, you're, you're talking to this chat GPT, it's responding to you. It's kind of like you're talking to a friend, right? It, it's kind of helping you along the way. At a certain point in time, your friend will start to lose its memory. It literally will start to forget what you're talking about, and it'll start to change the topic. Um, I th think you saw that earlier when I when I asked it to look at the, the PDF and it changed the topic. I don't know why it did it so quickly, because it, we didn't reach the character limit. Maybe it did. Maybe reading through that helped it to reach the character limit. That could be it. But the character limit is 4,096 characters in any conversation before it starts to forget what's going on. And I could actually... I. I can give you a better example of that, but I'll, but this is essentially what happens here. And that is in the total conversation that includes your input and its responses. Um, so what I, I asked chat GPT, well, how do we handle that? And this is the response it gave me. Um, and basically when you, at a certain point, you got to, I guess you should be keeping track of your conversation. I keep an open Google doc and with the, be the best responses I get, I cut and paste them into that Google Doc and just keep it a running document. 
And then at, at a certain point, you want to stop the conversation because you know that it's going to start forgetting stuff. So you want to look through and identify the key points. You can ask it to give you a summary with the key points at the very end of what you believe will be that conversation. And then you go back in, start a whole new conversation, summarizing the previous one to continue that conversation, right? That's kind of the only way to do that. If you are in an ongoing, like questioning and answering sort of a conversation. Um, a good example, let's see if I could find it, um, is here. So I am, I'm writing a book. Um, and I'm actually uh, writing a book about graphic design, but it's it's taking the form of a fantasy novel uh, from the point of view of a group of dragons. So it's it's actually for a middle school age kids to learn about graphic design, but it's a story about dragon, a friend group of dragons who explore the world of graphic design. And through the course of the book, they learn about uh, famous like real life graphic designers that I'm integrating into the story. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. And I used chat GPT to help me start it out. And it literally helped me get through like a whole bunch of stuff, like lots and lots and lots of information. This is all the, this is the initial prompt. Um, and I'm not going to read through it, but um i basically gave it you know, what does middle grade mean and i you know these are picture books that have to do with blah 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 whatever and i just gave it as much information as i could and then started talking to it about the 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 book and it literally let me go down a little further here um and it, it started writing chapter one chapter two chapter three and then you can hone it better, you know, like in chapter one, I want it to, to go this direction. I want the characters to be like this or like that or whatever. And then at a certain point, my whole point in showing you this is like down around here, it started to give me new names to the characters. It started to forget the, for, you know, like the, the plot points and changed my entire story as it went. So that this is a great example of how you know, it, it will absolutely forget what your original conversation is all about. Okay. One other thing I, I just want to say that, that uh, on the topic, it's kind of a, a side note real quick. The topic of uh, plagiarism, chat GPT will not plagiarize. It can't plagiarize. It, uh, it, the responses that it gives you is generated based on the data that it finds, but it, it composes and generates its own response. So it will not give you uh, plagiarism or plagiarized responses, I should say. Okay, so um, let's see here. Uh, another example here, note-taking guide. I actually, I'm really bad at note-taking. I've never been really good at all in high school and college. I, and to be quite honest, nobody... I didn't have anybody teaching me any of this stuff. I had to figure it out. And um, so when I when it comes to teaching the students, I didn't feel really confident about how to teach them how to take notes. So my classes, I really never asked them to take notes. This year, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I needed some help about how to, how to do that. And so I, I asked for a step-by-step -step guide about note-taking. And this is what I came up with. And so I'm going to be working really hard on making this work with my students uh, this year. Oops, an error occurred. Okay, let's get back to that. Chat GPT just crashed on me. And it will do that from time to time. Occasionally, you'll find that Chat GPT is simply being used by too many people. It will give you a, a message that says, you got to wait. You got to wait your turn. It will email you or let you know when it's available and you just have to check back. So. It's one of the things that you just have to have to pay attention to or watch for. So is there anything else you guys would okay. like me to cover? I, there are a couple of other things in here I can talk about, but is there anything else you would like to hear about? Hey, Dave. Yes, Steve. Hey, um, when when you were you showed you were creating some um, um, handouts, is there a way that it will include since we 
teach visual stuff that we can that it will add um, pictures, images, or even links in the handouts. Will that will generate that kind of stuff as well? That's a that's a really good question. Um, a chat GPT is a conversational model. It doesn't yeah. deal with images, but I think you can it it may give you uh, links to find those images. But let's let's try it. Let's try it. Let's go. All let's do the the Cold War summary, right? And let's ask it, uh, create a handout for students that includes visual, uh, let's see, images. I was going to say visual references, but let's literally say images and photography from the Cold War era. Let's see what it comes up with. I did this one in, let's see, let me go to the top. This is with 4.0, so it's okay. going out to the, sorry, bear with me one second. I'll let my dog out. Okay, let my dog back in. All right, it's using web pilot. Okay. Uh, I don't see images. Uh, <laughs> let's see. That includes images of photography from the Cold War era, includes several steps. Space race, description. Maybe it's going to add it to the end. I don't know. We'll see. Oh. References. Yeah. Well, that didn't help. Um, <laughs> give links to the images I will need, need for this handout. Now, as you can tell, it's trial and error, right? It's, I mean, it's you know, it's fun to to work your way through this and to see what sort of responses it comes up with. Sometimes it's a little frustrating, but for the most part, mostly it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and helpful it's been amazingly helpful boy it's taken forever let's see maybe it's each one is looking for a new image let's see let me look in here let's see links getty images harry truman right and this one is looking at joseph stalin so it's gathering all of the the content. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. Oh, it's going to go on. So, yeah, it, it could go on a while longer. <laughs> I've I, I've sat like for an hour watching this do this exact thing before. So I'm not going to put you guys through it, but um, but I highly recommend. And I um, that I don't think chapter uh, three point five would or GPT 3.5 would give you that same information. I think 4.0 is the way to go. Uh, I actually did the same thing with my chat GPT 4 and it actually provided me links. Some, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you result, would, probably would sorry. go it. Yeah, that's the cool. The is different every time. Like yours showing, yours are kind of, um, the result appears with um, kind of in cold format. Mine was kind of like, just like what I searched on Google, you know, with some some of the uh, blog that you went into the website where they have, you know, list down of one to 10 different links um, where you could just click on it and directly went on it. I could just, here, and then uh, it would show a couple of the preview images. Oh, is it right? So guess, yeah, so it's a little different, I guess. And I think it probably depends on what you're asking to maybe right. was right. my question. I kind of just type a really quick one going like, oh, show me, find me the top 10, I don't know, graphic design resume. <laughs> right. yeah, and it yeah. Was just, yeah, so probably probably because of that subject, probably includes, it probably has more uh, images available on the search. That's my guess. Let's, let's pop in, show an example of a, uh life magazine ad from 1952 let me just see if it what it comes up 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So right off the bat, yeah, I'm a conversational model. I don't, it can't help you there. Let's go to GPT-4 and see if, let's see, let me take that whole question, pop that into a 4.0. Yeah, no, it's uh, interesting. I don't know how, you know, where it is, it is, like I said, trial and error. And sometimes it gives you what, what, what you want. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. I think the word link it's um it's the key it's you, the you key. think so okay yeah show, show any um how about this show links me links to ads there we go. all right let me stop the generation and start that one. Oh, okay yeah i love how it says i'm sorry for the confusion yeah Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I, I have seen it in some instances, instances help out, but, um, but there you go. Anyway, all right, you guys, let's end it. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I, you know, like I said, you know where I am. I'm on Facebook. I'm also, uh, if you, you want my email address, it would be dblock at pylusd.org. B L O C guys like D B L O C K at P Y L U S D dot O R G. All right. So there you go. All right. Thank you. Have Dave. a great afternoon. Have a great start of your, your next school year. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for coming.